a mature cataract with about 8 mm pupillary dilatation, 6 mm long conjunctiva thinans flap is raised without separating them, a 6 mm straight scleral incision is made and hemostasis achieved. We are trying to dilate the pupil a little more by tropicamide phenylephrine eye drops which is applied on a piece of cotton at the opposite limbus. Sclerocorneal tunnel is created and antechamber is not entered at this stage. Sclera is fixated with a good scleral fixating 1 to 2 forceps. For 3 mm long entry is made at the anterior end of the tunnel to enter the chamber. Under the air, tripan blue is injected. There is a certain amount of floppy areas in the eye. Visco is injected into the anterior chamber to deepen it. The needle is entered through the tunnel floor, the technique that I adopt in all the cases, which keeps the tunnel closed right now with the anterior end of the tunnel lifted up by the pressure in the anterior chamber. There is no exit for the viscoelastic, so the chamber remains deep and the chance for the rexis to run off to the periphery is minimized. A quick rexis is made which is slightly eccentric and smaller. Lignocaine is applied into the anterior chamber under the coat of viscoelastic. The tunnel is in enlarged to about 6 to 6.5 millimeters because expect this to be a hard nucleus. No hydrodissection is done. The nucleus is rotated in situ to release the attachments to the capsule. The cortical aspiration is performed to reduce the bulk of the cataract as the rexus is slightly smaller in size than desirable. Nucleus is rotated and prolapsed into the anterior chamber. There is not much of epinucleus in this case. It is not a large nucleus, it could be easily prolapsed. It is not getting bisected. I would always divide the nucleus into two in the anterior chamber with the shaft of a cannula, but it is not happening because of the hardness. I am scoring the nucleus with a cystitome. Cystitome is mounted on a 2 ml syringe filled with viscoelastic. So the viscoelastic is continuously injected into the anterior chamber in addition to scoring the nucleus. So that minimizes the endothelial touch of the nucleus. The hemi-nuclear pieces are easily viscoexpressed from the anterior chamber. Complete cortical aspiration is essential in such a case because small wisps of cotton will be stuck onto the equator and which needs to be removed to minimize the post-operative inflammation. A 12 o'clock candle is used for the right side and left side cortical aspiration under the tunnel. The cortex will be in bits and pieces. It's not str like strands in an immature cataract. So you need to go to every clock over to specifically look for chunks of cortex. There is a single tunnel which is 6 mm long and uh, it is self sealing tunnel. It is not dilated or distorted during the nuclear extraction. It is a cold technique. It is a anterior chamber remains normal throughout. It is not deepened like in other techniques where positive pressure is involved.
endothelium is maximally protected in this technique. Anterior capsule is polished and the visible cellular layer in lens epithelial cells are aspirated into the port. No side ports are needed uh, for this technique. In the lens does not have to be folded, its virginity, its neatness is maintained because it's not folded and pushed through a small inject cartridge. This is a small rexis and obviously it will end up in phimosis a couple of years later. So I would like to enlarge it. A small nick is made on one side of the rexis with a vanas. There is enough space in the tunnel to pass a standard small sized vanas with a uh, rexis forceps. So we could comfortably make a larger rexis. So that it becomes circular, and the chance for the phimosis is almost eliminated. Complete visco aspiration is essential from the capsular bag, from under the lens, from the angle region, and from what is stuck on the back of the endothelium. That's the way I form the chamber at the end. There's no need to hydrate the tunnel. The only one limbal con uh, incision of the conjunctiva is closed with the components of fibrin glue. So there is no external opening at all at the end of surgery. The eye is kept open. It's done under tropical anesthesia. Thank you.